Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for today's demo. So just before we get started, I just want to say that this webinar is being recorded and we will send everyone an email later on today with a link to the recording of the demo. So I'll now pass you over to Tom, who will be giving you a demo of BTC software. Their mission is to provide feature rich, affordable accounting and tax software to simplify the lives of accountants, businesses and individuals. Tim will jump on then for the questions and answer session towards the end of the webinar. So please feel free to write in any questions that you may have. So just bear with us while I pass over the controls to Tom. Perfect, thank you for that, Holly. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So I will be uh, providing with the demonstration today. Um, so I would say let's uh, let's get started. Um, so just to begin with, uh, we're on the, um, the splash screen of the product. Um, so this kind of gives you an idea on what sort of modules we work with. Um, so you can see at the top left, we've got PM solution. So this is kind of your client database, any sort of task tracking, uh, reminders, any sort of document management. Uh, you have SA, which is your individual tax, um, trusts as well, so any sort of sole traders as well. Um, we have corporation tax, again, that's the CT600. Um, accounts production, which is um, all of the accounts production templates, so things like charities, partnerships, trusts, um, and we've got quite, quite a few different templates available. And then Solution Cloud. So th there's two different variants of the software at the moment. So there's the first version, which is um, installed locally and the data is stored locally as well. Um, or we can host the database using Amazon Web Services, um, kind of removing the need for backups and uh, being able to access the same data from multiple different locations. Um, I think we work with around about 2000 practices um, and I'd say about three quarters of them, um, I would say would use the local version of the software and about a quarter of them use the hosted database. Um, that being said, with these two versions, we do also have a, um, a cloud, pure cloud version being released soon, hopefully within the next uh, three months, I'd say about, I, th I think the aim is uh, February, March time, so. Okay, so, so all of this kind of gels into, um, into the solution suite, as, as we call it. Um, so this kind of gives you a, a full idea of what we do. So let me just proceed into the software. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll start off by saying that we, um, so we've got two different views. We've got the organization view, and there's also the individual view. So I'll just line those next to each other. You can see that the information across all the tabs is exactly the same across both. Um, it's, again, again, it's the same data across both, so it's nice and easy to deal with. I'll, um, I'll carry on with an organization in this instance, and I'll just swap to demonstration copy. Um, so the details tab is the first tab. It's, um, it's, it's all about all of the client standing data. So things like the organization name, unique tax reference, VAT numbers, and kind of their statuses. So whether they're a limited company, whether they're individual um, charities, that sort of thing. Um, everything that's in this section, we can extract out of uh, existing packages. We, we can kind of export and re-import into, into the software itself. Um, we do have a few different functions on this tab as well. So we have our company's house search. This is another way that you can input um, data into this tab. So I'll just show an example. So just type in BTC software and it brings up all the information across uh, for BTC software for, from company's house. Uh, we also have our company secretarial software that's linked in here. Um, it's a, a module that we've had for a, probably about three, four years, um, fully integrates with the database um, and there is an additional cost for that. Um, and we also have a link to our BTC hub. So BTC hub is um, at the moment, it's for VAT filing and individual tax, um, but it's our development platform for the future. So when I talked about the pure cloud version at the beginning, um, that is where all of our products will be eventually hosted um, early next year. Uh, so all of the accounts production, corporation tax, trusts, partnerships, all of that will be on the cloud. Um, so I guess the, the key thing I'd say for this tab is that um, w once you've keyed in the data for a client, there's, typically you don't really need to key any sort of more information in for this tab. Um, and just to make one point, just for the ref rest of the demo as well, uh, you can see there's some boxes here in green. 
um, those boxes are mandatory fields, so you have to enter information into those. Uh, so just moving on to the Know Your Client tab. Um, so this is our version of anti-money laundering. Um, so you can see we've got things like risk levels, risk notes. Um, those are in line with anti-money laundering itself. Uh, we do have val validation checks as well. So there's identity verification documents you can import in, so things like passports, driving licenses. Uh, you can store any sort of that information across. Um, there are further information as well. So there's things like you can tick a box for meeting a client face to face. Um, you can move in other documents as well, not just identity verification documents. Um, and there's things like further notes down the bottom here. Uh, there's also marketing preferences down the bottom here, kind of in line with GDPR. Um, again, it's real time information, so you can update that as and when, and it gives you an idea on what preferences people have for contacting. Uh, moving on to key dates. So key dates is a, a dashboard view of any important dates coming up for each client. Um, and they basically change depending on what type of client you select. So it'll be different from individuals to organizations. Um, all this data is derived from the details tab um, and they also populate and won't lie dormant. It's quite an easy tab. Uh, contact details, again, a very simple tab. It's um, the addresses that are either pulled across from Companies House using the Companies House search uh, or imported when we do the import. Uh, you can manually add addresses in as well, but you can see here we've got multiple different types of addresses, so home address, invoice address, trading address. Um, associated individuals and organizations, I'll cover those at the same time. So associated individuals is any sort of things like directors, trustees, uh, that you want to associate with a company. So obviously every limited company will have a director and this is where you'd associate them. Um, organizations is similar, but it's things like uh, sister companies or any directors that have ownership of more than one company. Um, and what I would say is these first six tabs that I've covered, uh, they kind of hold the majority of any sort of key client information. So that's mostly including the data that we import. Um, most of it we can import. Uh, we can't. The only thing we can't import, which um, not many providers do, is um, prior years. Um, that's just it's it's not a typical thing. So financial data. Um, but our support team do help with the the importing, and there's no extra charge for that. It's just including part and parcel. Okay. So moving on to appointments. Um, so appointments is essentially tracking meetings uh, that you have with the client. So uh, you can have internal meetings, external meetings, um, but these sorts of things you can fully customize. So if you didn't want to have them titled as internal or external, you could call them whatever you like, really. Um, you can reference any sorts of notes as well. There, are, There is a notes section on each meeting. So, OK, so what I'll do is I will um, I'll go to the task tax and AP returns, but I will actually uh, I'm just going to create a task and then I'll come back to that this tab afterwards, actually. Um, so just creating a task. Um, you can see here I've got a, a list of event types. So there's some in bold and there's some not in bold. Um, all of the tasks that are in bold are system defined, uh, which means that they're uh, all of the compliance tasks, all of the predefined on the software. So things like corporation tax, VAT returns, year end accounts. Uh, anything that's below that and not in bold, they're custom defined ones that we've created ourselves. Um, so in this instance, I'm just going to use quarterly review. Um, you can see we've got status, descriptions, all that, uh, start date, due date, and reminder. Uh, so the reminders are very similar to um, kind of like an Outlook calendar. I'll, um, I'll just set one for a few minutes' time. Um, and again, the same way that's like an a a Outlook calendar, there's also a recurrence tab. Um, so again, you can uh, add any sort of recurrence on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly, or yearly, and you can end it off a certain amount of occurrences or end by a certain date. Uh, but for now, I will just save and close. Okay, so what I will do now is I will show you our, um, so we have a, a report that I probably would say is one of the most important reports that people use. Um, so it's called the Pending Events Report. Um, so it's basically a holistic view of every outstanding event, and it's a complete view of every single event that's available. Um, so there's all sorts of filtering you can do. At the moment, I'm just showing the tasks, the events I've got selected for myself, anything that's in progress, but you can do show completed and it'll show completed tasks as well. Uh, you can filter by different users. So say for example, I go onto Tim, you can see all of Tim's uh, events for his specific clients. You can filter by tax year, 
you can filter by all sorts of different things. It, it's it's very very easy to use and it's um it's really useful. It's this is what I would say that most accountants when they use the software would they'll open this up at the beginning of the day, have a look at what events they've got going and kind of work um and start working from this. Um, a popular search that, pe that people use is period end. I know that make, kind of makes sense. Um, you, you can also export all of these events into a CSV. Um, some of our clients do use that at the moment to incorporate into existing reports. Um, but in a way, it's kind of almost like a natural replacement for Excel spreadsheets. So, um, and just to make a note, you can see here we've got statuses. I'll, I'll come back to statuses a bit later, but that's uh, where they're held. Um, so I'll just come off of pending events. Um, I'll just show you some of the other reports we have available as well. Um, so there's reports on tax return status for individual partnerships, trusts, payment schedules, uh, income and profit data. Uh, there's year-end account reports. There's uh, submission status reports, VAT returns reports, uh, calculations for individual partnerships and trusts, uh, more MTD qualifying income, CS solution. Okay, so just you can see here I've got um, the reminder, reminder pop-up I made earlier. Uh, this is just to show it's like an Outlook calendar. So you can dismiss it, you can snooze it, um, or you can open the item itself. So I'm just going to dismiss in this instance. And just to carry on with the reports. Uh, so again, clients, client list, there's time summaries, effort summaries, uh, more effort summaries, and time log summaries as well. Okay, so next I will go to reports and letters. So reports and letters are um, quite, it's quite a, a simple thing. So let me just go to the covering letters. So I'll start with them um, with covering letters to begin with. Um, so covering letters, as most people know, is uh, kind of the, the front page uh, of a set of accounts. Um, so at the moment I've got an individual tax return covering letter selected. Um, so there's all the sorts of things you can customize through the software. So you can use PDF background templates. So say if you wanted to have logos added to the templates, uh, you could. Um, you can make any sort of changes to any section within the software there. Uh, you'll notice here at the top, it's referencing a global template. Uh, so this will, you'll, you'll only have to make the changes on this specific template and you can use it across um, multiple different clients, um, mostly because of our database tags. Um, so database tags are something that a lot of providers do, do provide. So things like, uh, emails, forenames, full names, so you can reference those within the letters. Um, we are slightly different to some providers in that we actually offer um, the ability to do it via tax return as well. So all the tax return information you can make reference to within letters. Um, it's just something that we've we've always thought was useful and some people do, um, do actually use quite often. Um, and again, so any change you make will be a global template. Uh, so if you wanted to show tax return information, you could. So I'll just show the um, client letters as well. Um, so again, client letters uh, are very simple. Again, we, we do have some existing templates in here. So things like uh, we have a detailed tax questionnaire, engagement letter, simple tax questionnaire. Um, and again, these are global templates. So you make the changes once, that'll be the changes for all the clients. Or you can make your own custom ones for specific clients um, in general. Um, again, database tags are within these letters as well. Um, but one thing you can do that some clients do as well is you can always actually paste your existing letters over the top of our default templates um, just to save you a bit of time so you don't need to add any sort of information in. Um, and that is that, client letters. Um, so next I'll move on to folders. Um, so folders um, are basically your document management for the software. So you can move in any sort of single documents, you can scan them in using, if, if you link to a printer, uh, you can move in whole whole folders exactly, or you can just create your own and start importing single documents. Um, so if you do have the solution cloud with us, uh, you can back all of this up onto the cloud, um, but you can also, with certain documents, you can, sorry, with every document even, you can just email the, the whole documents across. So what it'll do is it'll open up into Outlook as an attachment. Uh, we do integrate also with DocuSign and MyDocSafe um, for any sort of electronic signatures. Um, so if you wanted to send through, say, DocuSign's secure portal, you could. It kind of pulls it up uh, as within the software. Um, and I'll just show a different example. So I've got uh, Smith Software is what I'm using. If I go to test in the community, you can see there's different files for each of these clients. Next, we'll move on to files. Um, so files is all about tracking physical files. 
Uh, so anything like archiving invoices in certain places, uh, you may want to have certain categories. So if I'll just click add, you can choose references, you can choose specific locations, and you can choose categories as well. Okay. Uh, notes. Notes is a um, it's a free form notes section. It's um, so you can make any sort of notes you want for any specific client. Uh, you may want to log telephone calls. You might want to log meetings. Um, one of the kind of the most common uses we find in our clients is um, they'll leave notes for other members of staff who are looking after their clients if they're on leave and just give them some sort of helpful note to kind of leave them with that. OK, so I'll move back into the tasks, tasks, tax and AP returns and I will move into the accounts. So I'll select year and accounts. So because I've got a, a set of completed year and accounts from the previous period from 2016 to 2017, um, you can see the accounting period has automatically set itself to 17 and 18, uh, but you can define those yourself. It's just like a date picker, like on a calendar. Um, so what I'll do is I will just view and edit in this case. Um, so now it will pull us into the um, year and account summary uh, for that particular period. So again, this pulls information directly from the details tab. Um, there's a few different things as well. There's things like return status, submission type, submission status. Um, so down here at the bottom, you can see we've got the specific template that's chosen. Um, we do have FRS 1021A, we have FRS 102, FRS 105, uh, but we also have templates for charities, partnerships, trusts available as well. Um, there are options for um, accountants reports. Uh, I know some people are members of certain organizations um, so again you can select those specific accounts and reports um, you can also select audited accounts um, it's again it's it's you, you would need to have an accountant report selected but that's what you can do uh, there's also the option for filleted accounts um, so that's quite simple so what i will do is i'll open the year in accounts now and we'll uh, transition from the kind of the client database into the accounts So straight off the bat, it's asking me if I want to roll forward the trial balance officer and other data from the previous accounting period. Um, so I'll just click yes on that. And we're brought up with a warning message. So within the software, there are warning messages and error messages. Um, so warnings are there for your consideration. Um, they don't affect the final submission. Um, it's more just, um, it'll tell you where where there's something you, you may want to have a look at. Um, and then there's error messages which won't let you proceed but it will tell you exactly what the error is um, so you just need to fix that exact error so i'll accept these warnings and continue okay so you can see here i'm, I'm met with the uh, covering page of the accounts uh, but on the left hand side with the table of contents we have accounts cover we have a few different things like profit and loss uh, we have balance sheets uh, detailed profit and loss um, and things like the extended trial balance as well um, so you can see extended trial balance is kind of where we'll populate our data um, from a few different ways. So I'll just scroll across. You can see prior final, uh, prior period final trial balance is from the prior period. Um, it's nice and straightforward. Uh, anytime you see a grey, dark grey box in the software, uh, that's where you can manually key in figures, um, and that kind of nicely segues into how you get data into the software. So um, you can manually key in a, a trial balance. It's something that some people do. Um, it's yeah, it's it's one of the options that's there. Um, we also have our incomplete records. So I guess the way that I describe this is uh, basically a shoebox of receipts. Uh, so any sort of payments and receipts you want to log, you can log them in there. Um, it's it's almost like I, I guess a, a mini bookkeeping package in a sense. Um, so there's that as an option. Uh, we also have journals so if i just add so you can add multiple different journals with different things on them or you can add a single journal with multiple multiple different lines um so it can be things like turnover cost of sales um there's there's a lot of different options for things like fixed assets as well um it's very very simple you just and you basically just add if it's debit or credit um most clients would only use journals for adjustments um, because it goes into a separate column rather than trial balance, but I'll show that in a second. Um, and then what I would say is the most common um, way is to use the trial balance import. 
Um, so basically we have um, uh, integrations with multiple different um, bookkeeping packages. Um, so if I just show, here's a list of some of them. Uh, but we also have this custom option, which is for spreadsheets. So if you if you have the spreadsheet in, in the right format, you can um, import directly from a spreadsheet. Um, what I'll do in this instance is I will uh, I'll use zero as I have that available to me. I'm just going to log in using my colleagues' details. And my colleague, Tim, is just going to pass me across the uh, six letter code. You should get via email. Um, may take a couple of seconds. Any luck on the, uh, the code, Tim? I have some, yeah, put me for one second. <laughs> Everybody. Sorry, it's still your uh, your line right here. So the number is seven five nine. Yep. Seven three one. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Tim. Um, so it's now just asking me if I want to access the data from zero for Smith Software. So I'll allow access. Uh, it does pop up here as a message saying that the, the names of the companies are different. They're, it's just the way that we've set them up within Zero, and the software has slightly different names. So I'll just continue with the selection. Okay, so you can see here we've um, when you've imported the trial balance, it's started to map them to the software. Um, so anything in green is is mapped within the software. You don't need to make any sort of change to that. Um, anything in red is something that's not mapped. Um, and you just have to map them yourselves. But again, this is something that was remembered year on year. So once you've done it in the first year, you won't need to map these things in the second year because it'll remember from year the first year. Um, so I'll just map a few of these just to show people the different examples. Um, so we've got legal and professional fees, administrative and legal and professional other. Current bank account, uh, we've got cash at bank and hand. Current account. Other creditors, we've got creditors less than one year. And other creditors. And you can see once I'm mapping these, these are turning green, so it knows that I'm, um, I'm mapping them correctly. Um, so equity dividends go to reserves and equity dividends paid. Okay, so once they're all mapped in green, um, I'm just going to hit import. It's asking me if I want to override the data that's in the accounts. I'll hit yes. So that will just start the mapping process. Apologies, the software has, there we go. Um, so you can see the um, the data has now been pulled into the trial balance itself. Um, you'll notice that there's quite a few empty fields actually. So we do have a button called uh, collapse empty data up here. Uh, what that does is it just pulls up all the fields that are relevant near the bottom, whether they have data in or not, and it gets rid of some fields that may not be that relevant at the moment. So I'll just do that. And you can see most of the figures have been pulled up uh, further up the screen. Okay, um, it's it's kind of a, I would say it's a nicer, nicer compressed view. Um, if you do notice anything wrong with the trial balance from the client, you can use journals to make changes um, and attach a journal report. Uh, so I'll just give an example of that. Uh, so I'll just title this journal one. So turnover, we'll do uh, debit 100. And then cost of sales, opening stock, we'll do credit 100. I'll save and close. You can see I've got journal one now. So if I hit OK. So journal one has now inserted itself into column D. Um, so you can see that there are the any sort of digital journal adjustments. Again, if you have multiple journals, it'll just add extra columns for that sort of thing. Um, you can have multiple entries under a single journal. I think the limit is 100 entries under a single journal, um, or you can just have multiple different journals in that case. Um, I'll also show you we do have two-way integration with Zero. It's um, something that not a lot of providers do, um, and it's not sorry, not just Zero with other providers as well for bookkeeping. So I'll just show off the journal export. Uh, so it's giving me an, uh, a message saying, do I want to check and generate yet? So for now, I'll just export. 
uh, it's asking me saying I don't have a code I'm just going to continue without codes so here's where you select the bookkeeping package you'd want to um, export back into so again I'm doing zero so I will do upload uh, yes, I'm going to update the existing counts production journals and just bring up the journals now. So I'll log in using my colleagues' details again. Uh, so now we're into zero. You can see um, all of the information have been um, successfully updated. Uh, it's uploaded. You can see here at the bottom, it's it received directly from the BTC Software um, Solution Center through the API. Um, and you can see it's it's live. It gives you the live timestamps of when it's done. Um, and again, here you can then post or you can save it as a draft and add any extra lines as well. Brilliant. So just moving back into the accounts. Um, so what I'll do is I will um, I'll check and generate the accounts. Right, so you can see here again, I've, I've got some warning messages. Uh, we purposely took out the page numbering so that we could show off the warnings just so that people are aware. So I'll accept these warnings and continue. And it's just checking and generating now. So brilliant. So there you go. It brings up a little checkbox as well, just to tell you it's been checked and generated. So I'll come out of the accounts now. Uh, so now we're back on the account summary. I'll um, open up the uh, corporation tax return. This is kind of how we integrate directly with uh, the corporation tax. Uh, so you'll see a similar period, a sim similar summary popping up for the corporation tax. Um, again, the same information from details, but there's also on the right hand side a return details section. Um, so this is all the information that are pulled directly from the corporation tax return once it's done, and it'll pull those directly into here. Um, so I've just opened the CT comp and CT600. Okay, so straight away we're on the adjustment of profits computation. Um, you can see again there's dark grey boxes, which means you can key figures in yourself. Um, we've got things like the CT calculation. Um, th there's not much you'll need to change on here. Uh, this is all about the chargeable amounts, um, but there is a section at the bottom here for any sort of losses um, you may need to cover in that section. Um, but we also do have supplementary schedules, so things like capital allowances, capital gains, CT 600E, for example. Um, but we do, since capital allowances is quite a big thing, we do actually have a, um, a separate section for capital allowances, which is quite straightforward. Okay, um, actually, I'll just tick a box. So if you see capital allowances, you can see it's now brought up a, a page on the table of contents. Okay, okay so um, since it's, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll check and generate on the corporation tax. So you can see here it's given me an error. So again, this will stop me from proceeding. I have to fix this before I can chain, go further forward. So I'll hit OK. Um, in this instance, it's just to do with the date, actually. Um, so date and the status, so it's director. So I'll check and generate again. Uh, once you've entered that information in for the first year, it will remember it for the next year. Uh, obviously, if you need to make changes, you can, um, but you won't need to remember that specific detail the year on year. Um, it's just checking and generating. Brilliant. So it's been checked and generated again, generated the IXBRL. So I'll just close the corporation tax and I will open the accounts again just to show you um, where exactly the corporation tax figures have gone. So I'll go into the extended trial balance again. And you can see here, I've got the corporation tax provision column now. Um, so the figures from the corporation tax have been pulled back into the account. So you can see them across there. Um, sometimes other softwares require you to manually key the figure back in. So that's kind of the link that we have. It just does it automatically once you check and generate it. Okay, so uh, sometimes this check and generate button will be grayed out. It basically means you don't need to do it again. It's um, you, You've not made any changes since doing that. Since I've checked and generated from the corporation tax and it's pulled the figures into the accounts, I do need to check and generate again. 
Again, a few different warnings, I'm gonna accept those. So that's just checking and generating now. And again, we'll get a, uh, a nice box pop up yep, like that, just to confirm it's been checked and generated. So I'll close that. Uh, so the accounts are now, um, they're done. They're now kind of ready to, to either be sent to the client for review or uh, submitted directly to company's house. Um, so if you send to client for review, uh, the return status does actually change. Uh, so it changes to with client for review. And again, that'll change in all of the pending events reports I mentioned earlier. Um, just so that you can see which which are with client for review and which are in progress at the moment. Um, what I'll do is I'll show an example of um, so so we can print a draft copy. So if I print uh, year end accounts, uh, so you can see here by default it's selected a full set of accounts with a covering letter, uh, but you can select filleted accounts if you want and any sorts of other sections as well. Uh, so I'll just tick draft and do create report. So it's just preparing the, the tax return report. Uh, so we can either print the software, print, print directly itself. You can use DocuSign to send it um, through a portal to the client. Uh, you can email it to the client. You can save as a PDF. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to preview. So this is kind of a draft copy of the accounts we've made now. Um, you can see this is the covering page. Uh, again, once you've produced it yourself, and if you're sending it to your client, it may not say draft on it. You can take the draft copy off. Um, you've got everything from the contents page, um, registered information, profits and losses, uh, statements, and it, it's it's all it's all here in in a certain format. Um, you you can change the format of the accounts. It is very customizable. It's something that um, is is easily done. Um, so yeah, if if you want to add things like logos or any sort of other changes as well. So I'll just go back into the software. Uh, so once we've sent to client for review, say they've sent it back to us and it's all ready to go, uh, you can submit to company's house. So I will just do that. Um, so again, it's by default selecting filleted accounts here, uh, but you can change it if you wanted to fill accounts as well. Uh, so you have to tick here that you have authority from your client to submit these accounts. So I'll do submit filleted accounts. Uh, so it goes through all of the checks here and just confirms this in the submission history as well. Uh, you can see the submissions failed because a uh, company else probably wouldn't be that happy if we just kept submitting things that was uh, false data. So there's that. Uh, I'll close that and uh, back on the account summary. So if I go to submission history, again, you can see the same information that was just popped up when I tried to submit it. Um, so that does uh, kind of cover um, most of the demonstration of our desktop product. Um, there are a few different things as well. We do have a help menu with things like guides as well. Um, there is full access to our support team if you have the software. So they have telephone support within hours. They have email support as well. Um, and again, they can help with anything, even if it's just setting up the software for the first time, importing data, or say you have a CT comp issue you want to chat with them about, that's absolutely fine. Um, so what I, uh, I haven't covered the individual tax within this demo, but it's very similar to the corporation tax. Uh, there's only a, a few different details. Um, really, it just asks you for things like the taxpayer status. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with that, um, but it's very straightforward. Um, final part of the demonstration, I will show off our, um, our new development platform I mentioned at the beginning for our VAT filing. Um, so I'll show off the individual tax that we have on this platform. That's called our BTC hub. Um, so this is what the the new um, UI would be, the new user interface would be uh, for the software. Um, again, the plans are February, March, April time um, next year. So to get the corporate tax and the accounts into this kind of look. Um, so I'll start on the client list. Um, it's quite straightforward. At the moment, I've got individuals selected, but if I change that, it swaps to organizations. Um, and there's all sorts of different things like the status, action dates, that sort of thing. Um, and again, there's also tasks for each specific thing. So there's some in progress, some approved for submission and some that aren't started. Um, so that is uh, it in terms of the product demo from my end. Um, obviously, we're going to be having questions at the end, but I, for now, I will pass back to Holly. 
Brilliant. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, so yeah, just before we begin the questions and answers section, I wanted to briefly mention the company behind by BTC Software. So Bright is home to award-winning payroll, accounting, practice management, tax and HR software, one of these solutions being BTC Software. Other products in the Bright family include BrightPay, Accountancy Manager, Surf Accounts and Surf Accounts Production. For those on the demo today that are new to BTC Software, we are the latest product to become part of Bright. BTC Software is a tax software expert with account production, corporation tax and self-assessment tax return modules. For those new to BrightPay, BrightPay is an award-winning payroll software which is used to process payroll for over 380,000 businesses across the UK and Ireland. BrightPay Connect is the cloud extension to BrightPay that offers payroll bureaus significant online benefits to enhance their payroll services. Accountancy Manager is an award-winning cloud-based practice management software designed by accountants and used by thousands of accountants, bookkeepers and payroll businesses across the UK and Ireland. Surf Accounts Production is a cloud accounts production software that allows you to increase the speed and efficiency of preparing financial statements for your clients. Surf Accounts is a cloud bookkeeping module that's seamlessly built into Surf Accounts Production allowing you to easily access and manage all of your clients' accounts from the one platform. This is currently only available in Ireland, but you can express your interest for this for when it becomes available in the UK. So I've included a survey that will pop up on your screen once we've ended the webinar. And if you're interested in finding out about the other products within the Bright Software Group, just tick the box and we can follow up with you with more information. So that brings us to the end of the webinar and we will send everyone an email later today and this will include a recording of today's demo. So it's now time for the questions and answers. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to type them into the questions bar and we will try to get through as many questions as possible. But now I'm just going to hand you back over to Tom and Tim for the session. Brilliant. Thank you, Holly. Um, so I can see we've got quite a few questions um, already in. So let me uh, let me have a look. Um, so I can I can see this question about um, linking with accounting manager, as I imagine there's quite a few people that are using accounting manager. Um, we do have planned integrations with accounting managers um, as we're both part of the Bright Group. Um, it's something that we're we're kind of pursuing at the moment. We don't have timeframes at present, but it's something that will be uh, in the future. Um, so we have a question about capital allowances. Um, what what we'll do is that there may be some questions here that we can't answer right now, uh, but if we can't answer them now, we'll get back to you um, offline outside of the the webinar itself. Sorry, so I'm kind of just jumping. I noticed there's a, a couple of questions around the ability to. Um, to test the software, um, I sure. guess in our language that would be a trial. I don't know if you want to explain about that. Yeah, so we do have a um, a seven day trial of the product, uh, that, so you can trial all of the accounts, corporation tax, um, all the way up until submission itself. Um, but we do offer one to one remote demos as well. So uh, similar to the, well, the webinar I've done with yourself, um, either I do a webinar, a demonstration, or my colleague Dan does as well. Um, so so. And if you need any sort of extensions on trials, if seven days isn't enough, we can extend that further. So, so it's quite a lot of questions, isn't it? Fantastic. Um, yes. Yeah. The there's a question in relation to um, the definition of a client. I, I believe that might be um, around the um, associated individual versus the limited company in, in, in your language as you were showing the software. I don't know if you can expand on that. Yeah, of course. So um, the way we define clients are essentially anything that you would be doing a tax return and a set of accounts for. 
Um, there, there may be some instances where you're just doing an individual tax return and not the accounts associated with it. Um, but so say for example, I take a limited company. Uh, if you're doing a set of accounts and a corporation tax for that limited company, that would count as one return, one client. Um, if you have a director associated with that limited company, that would count as a separate client in that instance. Thank you. Um, a question in relation to dividend, a dividend database. Yeah, there is a dividend database within the software. It's kind of a, a binary question there, so I can confirm we do have a, a dividend database within the software, which is um, available for usage. Um, a question around charity. Um, yeah. Sorry, Karen. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so so charities, we, we do have um, charities templates within the software. Uh, my exact demonstration license doesn't have access to those, but um, we do have access to that. We can we, we don't have a trial for the charity accounts, uh, but we can demonstrate those absolutely fine. It'll take about 20 minutes, I'd say. So. Our demonstrations are, are, are always kind of remote, unless we're at an event or a conference. So um, it's a case of if you're looking to to view the software on an interactive on an interactive basis, then we can arrange a 30-minute remote viewing of the uh, the entirety of the software. And um, there are more questions coming about the, um, uh, the, the, the the aforementioned links with Accountancy Manager. Um, and I think what we should probably say at this point is that we are, I would imagine, in the embryonic, embryonic stages of planning for that. In fact, I know we are. So um, that's a case of um, I'm sure you'll be informed. Um, by the right group um, when that integration is due to take place. So um, I'm, I'm certain there'll be some um, some timelines which will be published for the accountancy manager users that might be looking to change. Um, another question, Tom, which I, I think, again, you may have covered, but um, is at the very beginning of the webinar in terms of the movement of data. Um, so client data versus financial data. I, I can just round that off if you like. So um, if you're using um, other software and you're looking for us to um, load your, um, if you were to me to be software, load the data, we can do that for you. So we have various means in which we can extract data from your uh, incumbent software and move that into BT software. So when you, or if you were to use BT software, um, you'd have a lot of the data in terms of the client data already in there. There's ways in which we can um, provide links for you to move um, the data are over on a client by client basis in addition to sort of a, a bulk export or import export then import into our software um the financial data we like i think every other um software provider in the industry um do not choose or, or, or are unable to to move over prior years but there's various ways in which you can actually roll forward the data in the way you saw the demo earlier there's an option to set the um, accounting period back a year and then roll forward and then the prior year will be showing in the current year accounts uh, i can see we've um, we've got quite a few questions left uh, we'll, we'll probably pick a couple more and then uh, we'll we'll reply to other questions offline um, so i can see we've got a question about uh, an unrestricted um, licensing for the software uh, we, we do offer multiple different packages i know typically typically we um sell the software via the number of clients you're looking for uh, but we do have an unrestricted version of the software uh, we don't typically advertise it but it's something that we can discuss um kind of over the phone or via email yeah and, and maybe finally um, the the uptake of the software in terms of wherever it's available of single modules so if somebody doesn't require um elements of the database and um, whether that's possible um, I, I must say that so um, absolutely so you can buy um, corporation tax module um, you can buy the individual tax return module you can buy um, a module for charity clients because we're aware that we are um, one of the few providers of the charity templates within the industry and um, so you are able to buy for a, a specific requirement you don't have to purchase the full integrated solution with the module integration afforded so the solution suite as it's colloquially termed is um is available as a single purchase as a database that's integrated but you are able to cherry pick the uh, the modules within that database that you may require in terms of functionality brilliant so i think that is quite a lot of questions as i said we'll uh, we'll get back to people that we haven't answered uh, either via email or calling uh following the, the webinar um, 
just want to thank everyone for joining us today um just from myself and tim and so yeah thanks very much for joining us